Hello, I'm SF Said. I'm the author of the Varjak Poor Books uh, and also Phoenix. And I'm going to be giving you some tips today about planning your story for your submission for the Jericho Prize. Now, the first tip that I will give you, and this is probably the single biggest thing I know about writing, every writer does things differently. This is not science where there is a formula that we all follow, and if you follow this, you will get uh, predictable results every time. Unfortunately, writing is a little bit more mysterious than that. Uh, and so every author works differently. That's really the truth of the thing. And the only way you can find out what works for you is to try things out and see what works. If it's helpful, do that. If it's not, then don't. I'm going to tell you a little bit about what I do. Some of it will perhaps resonate for you, uh, some of it won't. If it doesn't, just ignore it. Um, it's only what's helpful for me. You have to find what's helpful for you yourself. Now, planning a story. I have to say, I don't really plan my stories. Uh, I am somebody who enjoys the energy of discovery. When I write a first draft, uh, I really don't like to know very much about what's going to happen. I like to find it out as I go along. Um, the one time I tried to write a very clear, detailed plan of a story before I wrote the story, as many writing guides will tell you to do, all the energy went into the plan. It was beautiful. It was very, very detailed, a fantastic plan. Then I couldn't write the actual story because all the energy had gone into the plan. So I resolved at that point that that's not what works for me. Um, with Varjak Poor, to give you an example, I started with nothing more than the idea of a character, a kitten, who had never been outside in his whole life. And what would happen if he went outside for the first time? Uh, that was really it. I had some idea that whatever he learned outside was going to help him come back home and save the day somehow. But all the details as to what it was he learned, how he learned it, how he was going to save the day, and from what, all of this changed as I worked on Varjak Paul. I plunged in, I wrote a first draft. On my first drafts, I really like giving myself a very small achievable target, because I, I think that's helpful. Uh, I don't think you should make writing more difficult than it needs to be. So I say to myself, OK, if I can do four sides of A4 a day, I like to handwrite on a first draft, because I find that much harder to edit. I don't think you should edit a first draft, you just go for it. Um, if I can do four sides a day, that's enough. That's a good day's work. If I want to do more, I can but it doesn't mean I can do less tomorrow. I always have to do four a day. And in a very surprisingly short amount of time, in a month or so, I've got through a first draft. It's amazing how quickly it can happen if you give yourself permission to just sort of enjoy it. Then when I finish my first draft, I put it away for as long as I can. Um, I try and get as much distance as possible. Then I come back and read it again. But this time, crucially, I try and pretend it is not something that I wrote. I try and imagine this is something somebody else wrote. It's actually a book I've paid money to read. I paid $6.99 to read this story. This makes things horrifyingly clear. I immediately begin to have all sorts of thoughts. This is a mess. Why did the writer do this? Why didn't they do that? And that is when I begin planning my story. I like to do it once I have something to work around. I like to generate some material, as rough and terrible as it may be. Believe me, my first drafts really are shocking. I never show anybody my first drafts. I would advise you to do the same. Just have a first draft as a safe space for you to enjoy and play and, and discover your characters and your world in whatever way you like. And then, yeah, then you should get tough on it. Then you should get critical and analytical, tear the thing apart uh, and find any way you can to make it better. And then keep doing that again and again and again. Uh, one thing I find extremely useful in this process is the notebook. Notebooks are a writer's best friend. Keep one by your side as you do a first draft. If you have a thought, for example, oh no, I'm writing a story about a cat, but really it should be a monkey. Just write on second draft, change cat to monkey. Don't go back and change it, because if you do, you'll start looping around and you'll never finish your first draft. Another mistake I have made. But just make a note in the notebook and then carry on. Then later, as you begin to analyse, perhaps between drafts, as I do, uh, you'll find notebooks incredibly helpful. Here's a couple of pages from a notebook when I was writing Phoenix. I was um, planning a series 
of 12 illustrations that we're going to run through the book. You can see from all the arrows and boxes just how many times these things changed and moved around. In the final book, uh, these appear as a sequence of images. These characters called the Twelve Astraeus. Uh, this kind of stuff, I don't think you can just sort of plan before you've got anywhere. I think you sort of have to know what you're dealing with to then begin to structure and shape it. But as you do that, as you begin to make notes, as you begin to structure and shape your work, you should think about things like structure and story shape. All stories have to have a shape. I wouldn't believe a book that tells you you must have a three-act structure and this is it. I think it could be anything, but you have to have something that lets the reader know where they are. You will have to do planning around the characters. Who are they? What are they like? You will have to work on things like voice. Are you necessarily doing it in the best way? Is first person or third person better for your story? Past, present, all of these things. You're going to have to figure out at some point, and this is all part of what we mean when we talk about planning a story. But as I say, this is something I like to do after I have discovered a lot about the story myself. It's for me more about shaping than it is about inspiring and creating. That to me, I think I like that to be kind of mysterious. But you should do whatever is helpful to you in making the best story, the one you secretly most want to read yourself. Good luck with your submission for the Jericho Prize. Happy writing!